Hello, welcome back to Mark's Garden UK at Rose Cottage near Nantwich in Cheshire where I've spent the best part of the last 12 months digging this enormous wildlife pond. The liner is arriving in two days time so stay tuned if you want to see this filling up. Now I've dug this pond by hand using this spade and this wheelbarrow and I've learned a heck of a lot in this mammoth dig about how to use a wheelbarrow. So in this video, I'm going to share with you all my top tips on how to use a wheelbarrow in the garden. And my first tip, apart from wearing good gloves and good shoes, is to always keep the tire inflated. Pushing a wheelbarrow across soil or earth with a flat tire is like pushing it through mud. So keep the tire inflated. It's a two minute job. It tells you on the side of the tire what pressure to pump it up to. And I've got a gauge on this little bike pump, which tells me when to stop. So keep your tire inflated. And my second tip is point the wheelbarrow in the direction of intended travel before you start loading it. If it's full of earth or bricks or rocks, and then you've got to turn it round, that's half the battle. So point it in the direction of intended travel before you start filling it. And if that happens to be on a slope like this, which I've exaggerated for the purposes of illustration, don't have it side on to the slope. Clearly it's going to topple. Don't put it that way, because you're gonna have to reverse it off and turn it round reverse it up the slope slightly then start filling it and of course never use a wheelbarrow on such a steep slope use sensible precautions a gradual slope is acceptable and my next tip is when you do start loading your barrow don't sling the earth in from the side it's just going to topple over exactly like that you're just creating twice the work for yourself because you've got all this to clear up as well it's much better to drop it from above, possibly even using a twist of the spade so that the inertia doesn't push it to one side. Now my next tip is, look at the side profile of this wheelbarrow. Look at the shape. It's got a high front end and it's got a slope on it and the axle for the wheel is up at the front. So the implication of that is load it up towards the front so that the weight is at the front of the barrel so that when you do lift it and you must use your knees to lift you're putting the weight over the wheel which makes it much easier to push and my next tip is don't be tempted to overfill your barrel it's easily to be tempted to be very ambitious and get loads in but you'll lose control you might as well do slightly more trips with a lesser load and get there in safety and under control. So if it means you've got to do small loads like this, but do 20 of them instead of five great big huge ones that end up spilling all over your lawn, use a smaller load. And in the long run, that will help you out because you've got to think about tipping the load out at the other end. Imagine tipping a massive, big, huge, heavy load of soil. It's going to take all your strength, whereas a more manageable load, you can tip it to your heart's content. Now, talking of tipping, have a look at this bar here at the front. What's that there for? Is it to catch people's ankles with? Is it to protect the tire? Possibly all of the above, but it's also there to use as a pivot when you come to tip this load out. And I'm going to demonstrate this on this plank now in front of your eyes. So it's not overloaded and the weight is towards the front and I'm bending my knees and I'm keeping my arms straight and I'm lifting the load and there's no weight to it because it's over the wheels. Next, I'm gonna keep the load low. I'm gonna very gently totter up this plank where I'm going to stop. Now, using that bar at the front as a pivot, I can lever it over and empty the load completely under control and completely safely. Imagine if I tried to do that with a great big huge heavy load of soil. That would be risky, potentially dangerous. Look who's joined us. It's Simba, my chihuahua. He's a constant companion in the garden. And of course, the other thing that they can use that pointy bit for at the front is a kind of a pivot point for shaking the last bits 
out of the bottom of your wheelbarrow and if you're doing a small job in the garden like this one consider putting a board down under the wheelbarrow because it makes it so much easier number one to spade and number two to collect any spillage and finally take great care over bumpy soft or uneven ground keep the load low keep your knees bent and your arms straight and do it in a steady controlled manner because if that suddenly stops you'll be over the front of it and that's a massive accident waiting to happen so there you go my top tips on how to use a wheelbarrow in the garden all self-taught based on my experience of digging this huge wildlife pond and don't forget the line is arriving in two days time so if you want to see that subscribe hit the notifications bell and i'll see you soon for more gardening adventures bye for now